All right there, geezer, it's Jules here from FGS, home of the Future Game Show. And at the moment, I've got one thing and one thing only on my mind, and that is technically two things in the form of video game mashups. And no, I'm not talking about the British tradition of squashing potato juice and then inserting it via intravenous drip, because that is the purest ride, my friends. No, I'm talking about when two genres, sometimes of very opposing forces, collide together to make something absolutely amazing. Now, in reality, the mashup can lead to fascinating new ideas, offer new sources of revenue for businesses, and of course, manipulate the way that you think and act. But let's not think about that, right? Because I actually want to sleep tonight. Go to the world of video games. Go on, just leave all of that oily nastiness over there. <laughs> Boom. Bye. Instead, let's turn our potato-like brains over to the world of video games, where the mashup has become a near surefire way to turn the old into the new and the new into your new favourite title. If the age-old expression is, if it ain't broke, don't let jewels near it, well, nowadays it's, if both things are working, smash them both into a f***ing blender, baby! So let's take a look at mashups that broke the mould and our brains in the process. So I'm Jules, this is FGS, and these are seven incredible video game mashups you need to play. Number seven, Pokemon Conquest. So, while Pokemon... Easy air freshener. So while Pokemon nowadays is languishing in the doldrums of being creatively bankrupt, but at the same time making so much actual bank that it's absolutely never going to change it ways. And whoa, 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 before you stick me with whatever that is that you've got there, mate, I'm just going to say Pokemon at this present time isn't what it used to be, all right? I mean, if you disagree with me, Tommy, I just want you to pull up the Metacritic score here for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. It, it, ooh, mm, thank you, thank you. But you know what? There was a time where things got absolutely so wild in Pokemon that it made Brock's drying pan idea in a thunderstorm seem perfectly sane. Now, we're all basically in agreement that the Pokemon franchise just kind of releases what is, in essence, the same game over and over again, right? Well, it turns out that the creators of the Dynasty Warriors series saw this aping of their style, but instead of saying, hold my beer and watch me make the literal same game, for decades, and I love them for it, instead it said, let's go out for a beer instead, and they became sweaty lovers in the process. What resulted from that heady and rather musty night was a title that fused both games together in a way that very few saw coming and even less expected to be as bloody amazing as it was. Pokemon Conquest, a strategy game focusing on the Nobunaga's ambition arm of Koi Tecmo, but now in place of players controlling warriors of legends, instead now piloted a slew of generals and their pet Pokemon. Plus, it did all of this to the tune of a Tactics Ogre grid-based battle system. Seriously, my comfy shorts are now very, very uncomfy thanks to the diglet that is sprouting down there. I love this combination! How could you not fall in love with this title? It's taking the mass popularity of Pokemon and filtering it through the hardcore niche tactical lens and then whapping a huge amount of weave on top of that with the Nobunaga's ambition focus. It is a game that quite literally nobody asked for, but I am so glad that it exists. I need more of this. Please make a sequel. They never will, but I will keep asking for it. Number six, Pacific Drive. Now, sometimes it's a very small facet of a video game that will allow it to live rent-free in your mind for absolutely ages. It could be a character design, it could be a smarmy remark that somebody makes in the course of a dialogue tree, or, as is the case of Pacific Drive, it could be the combination of two of my favourite things that I never thought would ever collide. Survival horror and a driving simulator. If you're ever sick of seeing vehicles crap the bed as soon as they're needed in horror films, well, this is your chance to truly stick a carrot up that tailpipe, as in Pacific Drive, your motor is your only companion. Kind of like me and Tommy, right? <laughs> is he there? And you're to keep it in tip-top shape if you're to ever understand the anomaly that has consumed the local area. What this translates to is a desperate battle against strange creatures made of scrap, scavenging spare parts while under the constant threat of the ground giving away from underneath you, and of course finding out what the heck the giant red beam of death in the centre of all of this is hiding. Oh, and the route changes each time that you die, making this, as the devs have termed, a road light. Which leads me to my only criticism of the game so far, in that the devs had a surefire win with a different term, and that was survival horror. Thank you, lads. I'll be sending you an invoice in the post for that banger. Dangerous driving, survival mechanics, base management, and a disturbing slew of enemies? Well, pass me a plate because I want to fill up on this oil-covered mash. Number five, BPM bullets per minute. 
Who doesn't love themselves a bit of doom, eh? Whether you're running like a literal speed demon through the original titles or just handing out a ketamine-sized come down in the Mick Gordon scored metal fests, it is a rollicking good time for all. Except for the demons, obviously, who, um, well, let's just say there won't be many open casket funerals going on. In fact, some would say that the soundtracks to these games are some of the best. Say the line, Jules. Of all time! You thought I forgot about it, come on. Yet do you know what would be even better than slaying to the sounds of gods banging while well, making music a central part of your gameplay? And that's where Bullets Per Minute comes in, a game that mixes Doom-esque aesthetics and gunplay with an absolute belter of a soundtrack that also informs when the player can shoot, reload, dodge, and unleash their special powers. That's right my friends, you're gonna need to learn how to bust a move before you can bust a cap in the faces of your enemies and you can literally moonwalk into hell itself, point at the devil and say, Disco may be dead, but so are you, mate. I hear a god for Biba you say that. Yeah, you're right. And you do this all to the backing tracks of some absolute face melters. Plus, alongside the immaculate gameplay, crushing difficulty, and selection of characters with their own loadouts and perks, BPM also has the cutest video game vendor ever in the form of Huggins. Look at this guy. Look at him closely. He is your everything now. Number four, World of Horror. So if Netflix's recent foray into trying to ruin Junji Ito's seminal horror work has left you feeling as dry as a bone, seriously, could we have not sprung for, I don't know, some more animation in this animation? Well, fret not, my friend, as World of Horror will most certainly chill up your spine. I say this because this is effectively a mashup of Junji Ito's iconic presentation, classic choose-your-own-adventure horror books, and the even greater classic that is the Nintendo Game Boy. Oh, and by the way, all of the artwork that you see in this game was 100% drawn on MS Paint. If that is not dedication to the craft of torture, I don't know what is. Thankfully, the writing and direction of this multi-path horror gem is as tight as your voice will be in your throat upon encountering one of the many, many horrific beings that look like they beat up your worst nightmares just for the fun of it. Now make no bones about it, this is a mean-spirited game in the best way possible, punishing the player at every turn and instilling within them that every action they will make will likely be the wrong one. Add to this an ever-building doom meter that will see an ancient god crush the world into a pancake should you fill it up and you have got a cardiac arrest in one bit form and i love it plus it's just coming out of early access now hmm. number three creature in the well now there are so many things on paper that shouldn't go together but somehow just work out brilliantly chili and chocolate myself and childcare payment avoidance and of course pinball and dungeon crawling and yet are you confused? Are you intrigued? Are you aroused? Well, put that thing away, mate, because now we're going to talk about Creature in the Well. This, my friends, is distilled joy in video game form, as here you play as the last remaining robot helper of a dying town, and are tasked with one simple goal. Venture forth into the mountain and displace a horror that has taken over and sent the nearby area into ruin. Yet you won't be battling foes with swords, shields, and spells, as here you'll be using your equipment to create and deflect balls of energy around arenas in order to crush whatever stands in your way, and the resulting gameplay is supremely satisfying, incredibly addictive, and of course, pretty bloody unique. It's basically if the game Breakout turned itself into a pseudo-RPG, and I am here for it, as am I for the creature's tauntings that will routinely pop up from time to time to basically just look in your face and go, you're pathetic, mate, you're a loser, and I'm just like, oh, no one says that about me, mate, no one says about that, me, me, me and my, me and my robot pal, he's my dirty soldier, he's my rotten boy. In short, it's a staggeringly fun title and you should definitely play it. Number two, Lyca, Aged Through Blood. Now here, alongside Pacific Drive, is another one of those ones to look out for. Because Lyca, Aged Through Blood has a concept so delicious that it could age like fine wine should it be able to stick its landing. Now the first thing that you'll notice about this title is that it looks absolutely stunning, detailing a hand-drawn art style that looks like if Agretsuko was fused with Mad Max. Yet don't let the cute aesthetic fool you as the mashup on offer here is one of high-octane action. As this is basically a fusion between Metroidvania titles and Trials Fusion, hence the team coining the phrase Motivania. Yeah, all right, that one's much better than the Pacific Drive one, and I can't think of a better one. I, I, I came up with Mo Metroidvania, but 
I, 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 don't, I don't win all the time, all right? And that classic portmanteau is just the tip of the iceberg. As from the footage that's already been released, it looks like that motorbike is going to be far more than just a traversal gimmick. As in combat, you can see the underside deflecting bullets and other projectiles, meaning that you'll have to balance aerial stunts with protecting yourself in order to survive. And yes, I'm also very happy to see our hero wearing a helmet because, you know, when you're going to be shot in the face, it's nice to have that extra bit of protection, right? A lot of space marines could learn from that, that's what I'm saying. Why do the lieutenants always take their helmets off? You've got battle data going into your eyes, man. I, I know it's a different or well, different thing to talk about, but it just annoys me. Put your helmet on, mate. Stop your head getting chopped in half by a giant orc, idiot. Now, truth be told, in real life, I'm scared to even take one hand off my bike to signal where I'm going as I have the internal balance of an inflatable tube man. But here, I will be able to dive into danger headfirst, ricocheting bullets off my hull and popping a wheelie before launching a shotgun slug right into the face of my enemies. This is going to be a very cool game. Make no bones about it. And number one, Dark Cloud. And so we end on a game that actually took up such a huge part of my childhood that I kind of need to talk about it. As while some of my other friends were boasting how Zelda was the best thing since sliced Jesus and there were others who'd imported Dragon's Quest and were just taunting me with that, I was stuck on the PS2, but I had Dark Cloud and my God, what a great game it was. Now, the central gimmick here was the fusion between standard adventuring and dungeon diving with village building and management tools, and it is so delicious that I've put on weight just talking about this. In terms of a plot, there's a nasty genie that's been woken up and is en route to cause utter chaos. However, just before Aladdin's roided up mate can kick up a stink, a legendary divine being intervenes and casts a protection spell around all the houses and population of the villages. So far, so good, right? Well, there is unfortunately one problem. You see, Captain Bubble over here decided that what he'd do when he cast his protection spell is do it individually over every single person in every single house and for some reason didn't make them like intangible or ethereal so what happens is is that the genie comes along sees these literal orbs containing stuff like those little gacha toys that you get and just punts them a million miles away it's like ah oh, thanks for that mate you have technically saved us but you've launched me over across the world I don't even, I don't even, my, my bus pass on me, how am I going to get back? So now it's up to you, playing a character called Toan, to delve into dungeons and find these orbs and bring them back to the surface before planting them wherever the player sees fit. You'll then unlock new mini quests from the residents as they try to rebuild their lives, which of course leads to some hilarious moments where they'll be asking you to put their house near a water source, but you'll plonk it halfway up a cliff. Yeah, enjoy the walk, f***er, maybe next time you shouldn't complain about the music being too loud at 5pm on a Saturday. It's a weekend, mate. You can waste away hours building your ideal and, let's be honest, barely functioning community before then diving back into arcadey combat in the depths below. And it's a genuine shame that the Dark Cloud series never really seemed to get the love it deserved. Which is why I'm challenging you watching this right now to at least go and try this game or its sequel if you don't fancy going all the way back to the original and admittedly pretty wonky PS2 gameplay and graphics over there because the second one, it looks amazing. Dark Chronicle, fantastic game as well. Check both out please for me please i'm begging you please what do i have to do give me my shirt come on and there we go my friends those were seven incredible video game mashups you need to play i hope that you enjoyed that and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below as well as any other suggestions for what you'd like to see in this series going forward i'm going to be here on fgs every single friday around the same time so please make sure to come check out each video every time i drop it but if you want to chat to me in the meantime you can go over to my social medias where i'm at retro j on both instagram and twitter but i'm also and we got this wrong last time didn't we tommy i am aka egg Dad no i'm not I'm, I'm egg daddy jules damn i nearly got it wrong the second time then i'm egg daddy jules on tiktok if you want to go follow me over there i've released two videos now yes knocking them out the park and remember you can always follow tommy on his social medias over here as well he's a good boy so give him some love all right or i will come to your house and i will say that wasn't very nice Mm. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. There is a mashup that we can all get stuck into in our day to day, and that is just being kind to ourselves and treating ourselves with positivity. Look at that. They go together and ooh, what a sumptuous buffet for the brain and the soul. Just remember, my friend, that you deserve love, happiness and success. We all do as human beings, all right? And I want you to go out there and smash your life goals today because I believe in you and you need to believe in yourself as well. You can do this, you massive ledge. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.